I really enjoyed this one. It was a good reminder to take a moment, step away from the current situation and to look into something different and explore an interesting idea like anti-gravity propulsion. Angus joined me for this one and we deep dived into pretty much Otis Carr and what a fascinating individual he was. Looking back on it and you know, being a little bit removed from the podcast, now I've got the knowledge out of my head, do I think Otis built flying saucers? Maybe, yeah. I'm more leaning maybe yeah than maybe no. Nothing would surprise me these days, to be perfectly honest. And the suppression of such technology wouldn't surprise me either. Before we end on a bit of a darker note, I do really want to remind people to look for the little things. Look for the beauty that is still surrounding you every day. Look for the moments with your family, with your friends. Find some time to be with nature, if you can. And just remember that in the end, all we can do is try and be a little bit better than we were yesterday. I can't jump back on the microphone post what happened in Melbourne during the protest. I'll never be able to unsee police of my home state and it would be if I had to have a home state Victoria would be my home state raise and fire weapons on the public doesn't matter whether it was crack pepper or rubber bullets they raised a weapon and fired on their own people the people who they're supposed to serve and protect that will be forever burned in my mind and I don't care Who you are or what you say, if you think that's okay on any level, then your delusion is complete. This is becoming less and less about an illness and more and more about basic human rights. And if you can't see that, I don't know what to tell you. It may already be too late. However, again, remember there is cool things and cool ideas to be explored. So kick back and listen to me and Mr. McDermott wax lyrical on Otis Carr and anti-gravity propulsion. Remember, we're on Patreon, Unlocking the Code. Look us up if you want to help us out here. That would be awesome. Uh, Give us a follow, Instagram, Facebook. And look, I would love to hear from you guys. I'm talking to a few different people to come on. However, in this time that we are all existing all over the planet... I'd love to hear from the awesome listeners and the community of coders that are out there. Look after yourselves, stay safe, be kind, be cool, and we'll talk soon. Cheers. Start one blast off. I'm gonna leave that. How are you, mate? I'm well, sir. How are you? Good, man. Good. So, Mr. McDermott's back with us again. Uh, by, potatoes. by popular request, mate. They yeah, a couple of our look. I don't know how popular how, how popular. <laughs> old Dave, just Dave, just throwing one out there. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like. But still, a dude, two, a dude, a couple of blokes like, have asked, old mate. yeah, how, how Angus has gone yeah. and what you know when he's going to come back on and what you thought about a few things. Yep, and uh, it was over three months ago that we last sat down, mate. Can you believe that? No, not at all. It does not seem like three months ago. It, however, it was. It was. It was May, and we 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 ended in the rabbit hole of ufology or aliens. And you asked me a question during mm-hmm. that podcast that I did not answer correctly. Yeah. And we were talking about propulsion, and you asked me, how do I think these UAPs, UFOs, whatever they are, propel themselves? Yeah. 
And that basically has been nagging at me for three months, as it turns mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. And I was uh, getting getting a tat redone, actually, and, yep. and I decided to jump down the anti-gravity rabbit hole to understand that version of propulsion better. Okay. Now, what I didn't know mm. was the rabbit hole that I was going to end up in. Yep. And I was going to bring a person to light that I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that, but I hadn't initially heard of, but I think I had heard of way back in the day. Yeah. Um, and it's because of the initial things that are said about him, which is quite interesting, right? Yeah. But a bit of deeper research reveals a very, very vast and very interesting uh, journey. And we're talking about Otis Carr, and he basically gave me the sentence that I can build off how these things work, right? Well, let's start the podcast with that sentence. No, we can't. We're gonna, <laughs> no, no, we can't. You have to wait. We're going to learn about Otis, man. Blue balls me oh, like absolutely. that? Absolutely. Oh, we've got to do an origin story. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to do all sorts of stuff. Man. Nice. We're, we're, Ru- you're going to run the Marvel formula? Yeah. yeah no, cool, well, cool, not, cool. Yeah, not to a point, right? Look, it works. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, it's not exactly like it's a multi-billion dollar empire. Nah, so, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix I it. I do want to start with just a little couple of sets of facts that I come across that are, are, are related but are not related. I suppose this podcast is going to bring up the question of whether or not some of these UAPs are man-made. Mm-hmm. Whether or not through basically Tesla, let's yep. be honest... He designed UFO, and originally, I was actually going to include his UFO in this podcast, but I didn't get there, man. I've got like 15 pages of stuff about Otis Carr and his work right. um, with, with plenty of rabbit holes and caveats off that. So, mm-hmm. we might come back. We, look, we, keep, we have said for four years we're going to do one on Tesla, yep. and we haven't. So, right. maybe we need to do that. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about that just, later on. Just was, um, Tesla was pre-Nazi, wasn't he? Yeah, he he died in 1943. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but he was penniless and broke and had all his stuff stolen by Yeah, him. yeah, yeah, but I was just getting the chronology of um Tesla inventing UFOs or at least a form of them, you know. He had a design pattern and you can actually look it up online. Yep. I, so bit- I was just getting his timeline over the Nazis sort yeah, of thing because right. they were doing some yeah. stuff as well. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um but they did. That's later. Well, the thing is, the 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 Nazi stuff. Um, I'm going to say that Otis Carr's design looks a lot looks a lot alike that one. Okay, right. Um, okay. Yes, however, yes, yes. but before we get there, he like to think that the you know we talk about you know black budgets and stuff like that. Mm. Here's here's something. Uh, right. Okay. And it does feed into like. UAP research and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty-one trillion missing, according to a recent study by Michigan State University, unreported by the DoD, the Department of Housing and, Ur- and Urban Development in the US. Okay. Mm-hmm. This this little tidbit went on to say, the money is said to be used for unregistered programs which Congress has no control over. The black budget is helping build an invisible civilization with unlimited resources. Is being built. Right. It, is, it is far more tech advanced than the world we know. Any civilian who invents a competitive tech in the black budget world is tracked down and finds it hard to disseminate their inventions. Yep. And look, I think that's been from the start, okay? Mm-hmm. Right? When the, well, when the transfer of power and wealth moved to the US post-World War One, I, I would say that sort of thing was going on from the start and continues to this day. You know, like the amount of you know, we've we've heard about the missing money, right? That's the that's the oh, yeah. that's the World Trade Center thing too. Like some oh, yeah. ridiculous amount of money went missing the day before, and then planes flew into a building, and no one said a word about it. Yes, you know? it was announced the day before, and then it got scrambled in that section of the Pentagon that got hit. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, just that section. Archives were lost. Yeah. yeah, in that very floor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so look, that's got really nothing to do with Otis Carr. <laughs> However, it, it, uh, that was worth writing down. So I thought. I'd get that out of the way because the rest of it... 23 trillion. 23 trillion? 21 trillion. 21 trillion. And remembering a trillion is a billion billions? A billion billions? I'm pretty sure is it, it is. Yeah. I, look, it's beyond... It's it's a massive number. It's beyond understanding, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, like you, it's you, bigger than a billion. It, yeah, it doesn't, so it's, it doesn't really yeah, matter. So it's fucking... Yeah. 
a billion is beyond my comprehension. That's right. That's so, right. yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, 21 trillion. It's just really incomprehensible. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that's that's all you need to understand. Oh, no, I think, no, I think a billion is a million, bill, uh, a trillion is a million billions. I think, or some ridiculous number. It doesn't matter. It's a lot, right? <laughs> Yeah. What are you doing with twenty one trillion dollars? Yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah. well, you're building a fucking shadow civilization. That's, <laughs> yeah, what, they're doing. Yeah, that's what they're doing. It's that's just, right. Yeah, yeah. Fucking oath. Um, Probably in Antarctica under the ice sheet. Yeah, let's not terraformed come. lizard people. In, yeah, yeah, in yeah, fucking, yeah. We didn't didn't yeah. take long, did it? Didn't take long for you to wind lizard people into the conversation. Lords, <laughs> brother. Come on, it all leads back to it. That. All leads back to the dinosaurs survived, and they they. Control they us they the left underground. Earth, they came back. Yes, they're a spacefaring civilization. Yeah, on a big turtle. Oh, yeah. They're traversing through the universe. On a big turtle. Right, oh, let's spew back on track. Okay. So who is Otis Carr? Who, who is Otis Carr, Who Triff? is Otis Carr? Fill me in. I Otis am actually... Carr invented anti-gravity UFO-shaped spacecraft that could fly to moon and go beyond. Yeah. That, that, and this is an article, and I'm going to give Vicky Verma his due, because after reading probably uh, 20 or 30 articles, half a dozen websites, Wikipedia, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, he put it in a succinct way, and I have dragged a lot of knowledge out of this article, but it's it's the culmination of reading plenty before, okay? Hats off to him. Yeah, I, I like his work, what is it, right? Vicky Verma. Vicky Verma is a dude, yeah. Fucking Vicky Verma. Good it's a pretty on you, cool bro. name. Yeah, it's a cool name. He's got a, he rocks it too. He's got the him. double Vs. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use his first two paragraphs, right? Right. There, were very few, there are very few people who think that, jeez, uh, that was great. Wasn't that great? Today, Junior. Today, Junior. There are very few people who think to help mankind without considering any profit in return. After great inventor Nikola Tesla, Baltimore engineer Otis T. Carr was the only person who believed in Tesla's free energy concept. He wanted to create a spacecraft, spacecraft, a spacecraft that would run on free energy and take humans to moon and other planets. His friendship with Tesla lasted until his death in 1943. He was a protege of Tesla who constructed a number of fully functional flying saucers in the late 1950s. Carr was born in West Virginia in 1904, left school at 13, and self-educated himself. He met Tesla for the first time in Manhattan in 1925 while working as a hotel clerk. The two men talked about developments in technology and discussed energy productions. Carr, who reportedly discovered free energy, was inspired by Tesla. Okay, that's our introduction to Otis Carr. Now, we're going to come back to that. I was sitting here last night and there was like there was a there was a echo in my mind because mm-hmm. I thought I've never heard of Otis Carr. Yep. And then there was like an echo and I think I had heard of Otis Carr because the story that you look up on Wikipedia is he was um a supposedly invented flying saucers, but then he was done for fraud and doing dodgy checks. So basically he's passed off as a charlatan or a snake oil salesman mm-hmm. and he did 14 years in prison and that's it. Right? Shut it down. That's it, shut it down, right? There's the end of the podcast. That's all we need to know about Otis Carr. Good night. Yeah, thanks very much. Now, however, if you just skim the surface, that's yeah. all there is. Yeah. Right? It and sounds like so many other stories, you know, in terms of being shelved, something, you know, yeah, finding a way to silence you. Yeah, so yeah. it sounds like so many others. And he went to jail for fourteen years. I mean, it was nineteen. Uh, it was nineteen sixty. He went to jail for fifty grand. I mean, that was a lot of money in nineteen sixty. But fourteen years seems a little excessive. Yeah, puritanical. Yeah, you know. Uh, and we'll learn a bit more about that as we go on. But Otis Carr. So did he continue on? Once he got out? No, he sort of disappeared. It just, like, it there, just there, there, there's yep. a couple of conflicting pieces of information. So if we were to read Vicky's article, he says that uh, up until his death in 1982, he continued to try and push his technology. Okay. However, other articles that I read said that he disappeared. He basically just faded away. Right? Yeah. So either yeah. way, nothing happened after he got out. Gotcha. Okay. So the, the breakthroughs were made prior you know, all his stuff was seized, all his blueprints, yeah. his technology, all that stuff, yeah. Yeah. Because he was, you know, fraudulent. <clears throat> of course. Yeah. So he created what he called the Corotto gravity motor, and he used Utron accumulators. Okay, that was the two pieces of technology that he created to make 
this UFO fly, and okay. it was all to do with electromagnetism. Yep. Now, like you and your lizards, mm-hmm. if you remember, it's me and my magnets, right? Mm-hmm. Magnets. Magnets. Magnets are the answer, man. I still believe that, right? If you could harness the energy of the Earth through the magnetism and use that polarity and energy and convert it, it makes sense to me that a UFO uses electromagnetism to hover, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. I've always thought that. Spinning magnets creates enough energy and off we go, right? Yep. Now, Otis, he, he apparently gave demonstrations and there was a few little bits and pieces that um, it was like, I read, so there's an FBI file too. Like I've I got to, you got to see how, I've read a 65 page FBI file I've read most of his poetry, and this is a, that's a very interesting part of this story. Oh, okay, he's a poet, also. Uh, yeah. But he, he, he oh, you wait, you wait. It's he, dark. He, no, it's actually very cool. It's a coded poem where he wound his technology into it. It's very strange, mm. and I'll show you. I've got it here to show you. Um, but in those FBI documents, there was a few people that said they attended the demonstrations and they thought that it was a trick. Mm-hmm. Right? They didn't think it was real. Yep. So that tells me that something happened. At those demonstrations, right? Mm-hmm. At his big demonstration in 59, he didn't turn up because he had a, um, a lung collapse or something like that. Seems oh. like a legit medical thing. Yep. Um, but everyone says, oh, he was just dodgy. He didn't turn up, you know, like, and that was the, to, to test his larger versions. Because his idea was he had like 10 foot ones and he was going to build a 45 foot uh, saucer mm-hmm. that he was going to fly to the moon yep. in 1958. Right. Or 59, should I say. Mm-hmm. Um, never made it. Okay, we never got to fly it. Okay. But the Corrado gravity motor, it was it was energy obtained from the sun through the power of electromagnetism. Which is another, you know, it's there's that classic thing. You know, imagine if if you know someone put a big power generator in the sky. You know, like and we just mm-hmm. haven't actually probably explored and used the sun and that version of technology, I don't think, to its advantage, you know? Yeah. Um the technology was called Ultron Electric Accumulators. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and what I can do is I can actually show you what an Ultron inc- Accumulator looks like, and I'll post some of this stuff on the. Um, there is an U- Ultron ac- Accumulator. There, this is actually the designs and blueprints for an Ultron Accumulator. Okay, so mm-hmm. what does it tell me? What does an Ultron Accumulator do? Accumulates I, ultrons. It accumulates ultrons. What the fuck's an ultron? I don't know. What? Well, it's actually an utron. See, there's the oh, Marvel utron. universe coming okay. coming out in this, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. All drawings, actual size, background page is an A4. So that's an actual size. You know, if you were to print out an A4 of that, that is a literal size of what you could do it. Yeah. Made me really think when I found the blueprints for this that I call um, Mr. Hayes and get his 3D printer working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because there is actually more blueprints I think well, you can punch all the dimensions in that's pretty the drawings we're looking at they're fairly detailed they're very detailed and they, you can find these for, I found these in uh, like a disclosure website where they basically just gave them to me yep um, and he's he called his thing the OTCX1 okay mm-hmm. and if you want to have a look there, there's Otis there right yep that's his working model. That's what he used to show ah, the public. Okay, yeah, okay gotcha. there's a Utron accumulator there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then there's something sat in the middle here as well. Yep. But it's said that he performed thousands of tests before, but he just didn't have the money to get it across. Mm-hmm. Now, his main design was this, was the OTC X1. Right. Okay. Which, which, which looking at it, looks very... Um, Does it look familiar? Nazi looks, bell like. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, looks yeah, very, yeah. very familiar, doesn't yep. it? Um, that that same very similar design with the windows at the top. Um, very, very similar design. Uh, and what's interesting, I couldn't find a clear enough copy of this to actually read the writing. It's very interesting about that. Oh, okay. Doesn't matter how That's many times I looked at a different versions of this. Yep. It was never a clean enough version to read the writing. To blow that description. To blow up. that description up so I could that, actually read that it. That there that you have your cursor on mm. looks somewhat like a spinning disc of some kind yeah a lot of spinning discs right so yep. basically what you've got is you've got two halves mm-hmm. okay you've got a half here and a half there and basically they spin in a counter rotation yep uh and using the utron accumulators mm-hmm. that accumulates energy and projects it basically right from what i understand yep okay um this was his uh x1 this was his 
concept that he actually got a patent for, which was very interesting as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, this is this is what we were talking about. This is what Otis so dedicated we, are his we life thinking, to. There you go. There's the there's the spinning discs, and there's your. Are we thinking the Utron accumulator is what um, creates? It's like the generator section. Yeah, but there's many of them, right? So I think uh, when you look at it, so if you if you look at the other the, the other picture we've got here, and I will post these. I think your Utron accumulators are here. One, two, three, four, five, and he's got one in his hand, right? Ah, so yes. they spin around each other, and these accumulators generate uh, generate store energy. What what starts to spin? I I understand that they accumulate, but mm. like, what starts the spinning in the first place? Do, does he he says that it was it was supposedly uh, almost based on perpetual motion. So once once it actually was put together properly, it just started all by itself. Ah, oh, right, because of um, the opposing because of the opposing uh, like, magnetism. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Right, basically, it kept forcing on each other. Yep, and then you just controlled the spin, right, uh, of the disc or yep. the, the internals. Yep. From what I understand, yeah. The thing about Otis and what I what I learned about his work is that because he was done for fraud and sent to jail, mm. a lot of his stuff is very very. Um, it's hard to find, yeah, and it's not. A, and there's that's, it's, that's on purpose, exactly. It's yeah, like yeah, the yeah. same facts, but it's even like the FBI documents. There's mm-hmm. 65 pages of that, mm. and like six of them relate to the flying saucer stuff, and the rest of them are to do with how he dodged the Baltimore police and did this and did that and did this. And if you read it, he was just a dude hustling. You know what I mean? He was trying to make ends meet. Might have made a couple of wrong turns. Mm. How he dedicated his life to something, mm-hmm. and it was this. It was this the X1, right? Yep. This this flying saucer. Yeah. That he apparently made many like 10-foot versions of that he sent on many tests. Yeah. in the 50s. And, you know, it seems to be pretty clear there's an engineer by the name of Ralph who who's going to come into the story later. However, so we're going to I'm going to like end the story and then come back to it because Vicky does a good job of bringing it back together, right? Mm. So my initial notes 2 weeks after the last test flight, so Think about that. Two weeks after the last test flight, the project was closed. Federal agents confiscated the equipment and the documentation. Yep. According to them, Carr's project would collapse the US monetary system. Right. So they actually they said that officially? Yeah. As in like that that was their that official was in the statement? FBI documents. Yeah, yeah okay. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So basically I think if you read between the lines there, mm. he'd actually had created the technology. Yeah. And he was using free energy from the atmosphere. Well, as you know, at that stage, we're in the 50s. Yeah, post-World War II. Oil is king. Oil is absolute king. Yeah, exactly. So anything to do with energy um, was was in the interests of, of um, oil, mm. you know, mm. because they had been set up in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Mm-hmm. To, um, and they boomed within take, World War take One. Take over, yeah, yeah, because and then World War Two came and they boomed again. Well, World War One, all of the um, that, that's I, you know, I had my mind blown there a few years back when um, I dived into World War One and realised that all of the Middle East was split up and given to the powers of the world. Yeah, like that's when British Petroleum was fucking created. Yeah, absolutely, sort of thing. Um. Yeah, and all the all the ships, all the naval fleet of mm-hmm. of Britain changed from coal to oil, mm-hmm. sort of thing. Everything so did. The, yeah, yeah, airplanes, exactly. cars, trucks. That was all during World so, War One that that accelerated. So all of those people who were connected to the to the dividing up of those countries, and then created those companies afterwards. It was in their best interest. They knew they were onto a. Yeah, a money spinner, so absolutely. they had to lock it down. Yeah, you, you can't. You couldn't have fifty years into your run. No, that's right. Some, some bloke dude invo- or, in- or or multiple mm. people. Inventing Look, I don't think Otis Carr is the only one. They're just his story was so fascinating. Well, that the he came only back one, play. well, not the only one, but like m- many people didn't even look at UFOs. It was just automotive mm. energy or mm. or electrical energy mm. mm-hmm. that they mm-hmm. were trying to harness and create more efficient ways of well, doing so. Well, the first so. car was electric. This is the people don't understand that, but the mm. first car was electric and it was a lot more efficient. And I imagine if we had stayed on that bandwagon. That's right. You know, like 
if we if we had have poured hundreds of of years worth of money and time mm. at investing in that, we'd be on a completely different track. Mm. Well, but, you know. but we got the handbrake got thrown on, mm-hmm. and we sat on fossil fuels for so long. Yeah, the Rothschilds took over, and that's basically yeah, exactly. the end of that. And the rest. still here, yeah. Them and the rest, them and, and the rest, yeah. And fucking away we go. They yeah. they held us there mm. in that moment mm-hmm. to ex- extend their wealth beyond all imagination. And look, even outside the fact of a guy inventing a flying saucer, like mm. we know the guy in Adelaide that built the ceramic motor that ran on water that was just as powerful as a 202, he got disappeared. Well, he got some money first, then he accidentally crashed into a tree, mm-hmm. um, you know, the only tree within a five-kilometre radius. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Double yeah. tapped self suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, there's yep. the guys in Melbourne that invented the tyres that basically last forever. Yep. And you know, still are grippy. You know what I mean? They broke through there. Dunlop come and bought those guys out. You know, the, mm-hmm. the list goes on with this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's not like it hasn't happened before. Mm. And I think we, the military, still to had ultimate control back then in the fifties too. Because you know, like how many people were in the army in the World War Two. And they had so much money, man. You know, mm-hmm. like they had all the treasure that they plundered. I'm oh, yep. sorry, they didn't plunder any treasure. They had all, <laughs> you know, like they were, they had all the Nazi technology. You know what I mean? They had everything, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy seemed to be a bit of, he seemed, look, reading his, and we're going to have a look at his poetry in a second and the, the book that he wrote. However, I actually think he really wanted to try and change the world. Mm. And he was just, stuffed over like all the other guys we just mentioned you know what I mean Um, it says my notes say later charged with fraud and theft of 50k spent 14 years in jail right and that was sort of when I got to there I thought oh yeah I'm gonna this will end the bit on Otis and I'll um, I'll switch over to Tesla Mm. and then I started digging and then 10 pages later we're we're just gonna talk about Otis Um, (laughs) because yeah, it's it. and this is the thing. This is where it differs from the article because this is one of the other articles that I was reading. Once released from prison, he disappeared from the ra- uh, disappeared from the radar, lived peacefully until the end of his days, and his tech was never released to the public again. Yep. Well, that's true. Mm-hmm. His tech was never released to the public again. Um, as I say, reading through the documents, it's the FBI documents almost seem that, and I, as I say, I've got like echoes of like. Maybe even a teenager, maybe mm. like the 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 start of the internet, maybe or something. Because I mean, there's a few alien books in that bookcase that I've literally had since I was thirteen. Yeah, right. Uh, so I'm thinking like way back in the day, I might have looked at Otis Carr and saw that he got done for fraud. And I'm like, oh yeah, he's just a charlatan. He was just trying to make money. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. And that is literally how he's painted. You could skim the surface of the internet. Yep. And that's literally all you would get. Yep. Um. Especially in Wikipedia, like a lot mm-hmm. of people look at Wikipedia, it's like one paragraph, and it basically says, "Yeah, he invented flying saucers, but he got done for fraud." So you know, yeah, that's the end of the game. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, and like I said, in the other, the, the interesting, the, yeah, you had to read through the documents to find the good stuff. And I, I, like I said before, there was some investors' testimonies in the FBI documents where they're like, "Yeah, we." We came, we gave him some money, and he did a test for us, and we weren't quite sure what was going on. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it, this 10-foot flying saucer takes off and shoots away in there, shoots yep. away, and then comes back, and you're like, well, what just happened? You know, like no one – there's no concept. To, even now, well, we'd probably deal with it a bit better now because of the, the sci-fi world that we've come from. Mm. How do you how do you think the craft flew, though? Like, just just as, an, as a thought, um, as – not how it flew, but how? What do you think the demonstration entailed? Because I don't, I don't, unless he's controlling it, I don't think. It well, there was some remote control. So basically, a lot of his mm. tests were done with a remote control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Version. Yeah. Uh, and then he, look, according to our old, old Ralph, and we'll talk about him in a second. Mm. Um, he did make one forty-five foot. Um, machine and mm. it was test flown at least once, right? Uh, and this Ralph guy was in it when they test flew it. That's what he says, right? Okay. And he was an engineer that worked with. Um, ah, Ralph worked with Otis. Yeah. Oh, Ralph was in there test flying the forty-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and another couple yep. of engineers were test flying the forty-five yep. footer. Yeah, um, but I'm, I'm yeah because I'm just thinking like, did it hover? Did it 
you know, and that was it. And it doesn't, we don't, it just is a demonstration. So yeah. I imagine it took off, it might yep. have flew around a little bit and sat back down again. Yeah. And I suppose the thing is, how could you have a reference point for that in 1957, mm. 1958? Mm. You know, you don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. You know? Um, when I started re-digging, I'm thought, I had a few thoughts, right? And it was basically, um, the first one was, because it got repeated and and even the documents backed that up, that they, they seized all this stuff. Yeah. But multiple times I saw it, they seized it after the last test, not before. Mm. So obviously they were aware. Yeah, they're, they're probably watching. Yeah. Sort and, of thing. And, and it got to the point where they were... <laughs> They were happy. They were satisfied. The tech was to a to a point where they could just take it over. There was no mm. n- no true no further true development that needed to be done. Yeah, and it was also probably almost definitely proof of concept. Mm. And if it was released to the public, who knows what would happen? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So tell me, what was the what was the sentence that made you dig deeper? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We got pages before well, we get to Have there. you given me the end of Vendy's article yet? No, you no, promise no. So. You promise no, so I much. I, no, no. Well, I want to take you to a weird place well, first, conti- Yeah, continue. Let's go to a weird place. I'm going to take you to dimensions of mystery. You, who? A message for the 20th century. Okay. Who's who's this by? Otis T. Carr. <laughs> of course. All right. Now, obviously, it's 83 pages long, and we're going to read them all. No, we're not. Fucking let's go. <laughs> no, we're not going to read them all. I, I'm going to read this one carefully, okay? Uh, copyright 1958. All rights reserved according to testament. Now, what, I'm going to take you right to the end, actually, is what I'm going to do. We're going to, we're going to work backwards. All right. Because how much of 83 pages are you going to read? Not many. There's Otis, right? And there's his some right. Of his blueprints so, and so designs. is this what you is this what you found digging deeper? Yes. Like than than what the internet was giving you. Yes, at, very much at face so. Face value, very right. much so. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, what I wanted, and what is this in total? Like, it's not just. It's a basically it's a bunch of poetry. I've probably skimmed about thirty pages of it. Right. And it's actually quite well written. Okay. You know, you know, I like my reading, right? Yep. You know, I like my words. Yep. Um, you know, let's this look at this. Here's just an episode. The lion with his powerful jaws and mighty teeth will reach down and gently pick up the lamb and place it upon his back. The child will take a strand of the lion's mane in his tender hand and lead him from the Nile down into the meadow toward a crystal pool of water. The golden sun, now hurriedly departing, will turn the colour of a red ripe tomato and the night hawk will give his first cry. So that's, you know what I mean? Like, that's pretty cool. Like, as far as writing is concerned, it's not bad. And Mm. I, I got sucked into it but the problem was like, it was at the point where I sort of had to go to bed you know I got, like, I got stuck on the grassy knoll and the meadow like as I was trying to keep up and create a mental picture mm. I, I just saw a boy with a sheep on his back mm-hmm. on a, in a grassy field and I was that's about where I got stuck and see here you go here's a good here's a good point right he's talking about uh, when he tests it Right. Uh, this is and this is with it, all through these eighty three pages is like there's this part where it's talking about machine angles, and this piece of steel will go to this angle, and on the on the zenith of the angle will be this angle. He's giving away his technology in these eighty three pages. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a codex. He's one right? of those guys. Yeah. Um, He's like and, a pyramid builder. Yeah, something like that, right? So look at this. This com- contemplated pilot test of mine is no cause for alarm. There'll be no chain reactions and none will be hurt except possibly me and the other live creatures in the immediate vicinity. The test will be conducted in the dark of night lest anyone be misled into thinking that my device is some puny direct contact solar engine. I don't know what that means. The yeah, sim- no, well, he's saying to eliminate to eliminate um, the thought that that solar has anything to do with this because it's oh, not right, solar-powered. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... it's Magnetism powered, or well, there something you go. like that. There to, you go. To prove that it's powered by a certain source. Yeah. The simple yet accurate timing device will be the flame of one small candle and its yellow, orange, and blue hue will be the only light. If you think about how the UFOs were taken off been described, there's initial like a blue light or something mm-hmm. that makes them rise off the ground, right? Yep. We have heard that before. 
when the halfway distance between the earth and the sun has materialized nature in a great compensating act will transform the organic flame of the candle into the blue white sapphire like brilliance of the electromagnetic atom okay the mystical immutable law of the triangle will manifest as elements in the immediate vicinity come under the spell of transmutation <laughs> look this stuff's crazy man the human eye is capable of crazy but there's something to it. This human eye is capable of recording vibrations within one billionth of a second, and therefore I expect to witness the transformation of the candle's flame. After that, the cosmic has all answers. I would be the father of all lies if I say the final hour will not bring terror and apprehension. As things now stand, the test cannot be in the immediate future, as I must continue to hoe my garden, working for a livelihood for myself and worthy dependent and the slow repayment of a considerable financial debt accumulated during the course of tests and experimentation. At the time the final test is ready to be conducted, my government and some others will receive complete revealing document. And he goes on about this, we're going to come back to that, that basically he refused to give the entire technology to anybody until they made sure that it was going to go to free market. Mm. And yeah, the guys, the men in black had different ideas about that, as they usually do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Now, I want to just go to this here, right? So that doesn't... That sounded pretty word for word. It wasn't very poetic. It, it's that's, not towards the end. It's that's not, more so just like... No, but if you go into the middle of this, like 40 ranting. page and stuff, yeah. there's, there is full stanzas of poems and it's all wound into some really weird stuff. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, if anyone reading this feels concern about me, cease... Instead, let your sympathies extend to the gallant youth who are dying in violence while this is being written in order to create that which we cherish as a dream and ever strive to make reality. So this was done in 1952, so he's probably talking about the Korean, Korean War. Mm-hmm. A sensible freedom, a just interpretation of the law, and the right to freely worship God. Uh, there shall ever be vanity in the refinement of my heart, and I request that this little book be never allowed to degenerate in its appearance and form in any reproduction. Let no words be added or none taken away and let there be no changes. It must be remembered that this is a code work. If an infinitive is split, give thanks that it is not an atom. And there's weird stuff like that. Like he's just chucked that in there. Mm. And I think that's part of the codex, right? Never let the covers of this book be jacketed or ejected to be cheaply used to exploit it, but rather let a friend introduce his friend to this message. I introduce it to you, man. And those who care not for this recital, let them burn it. So mote it be. Witness my hand and seal this ninth day of March in the 1952nd year of his nativity. Otis T. Carr, Baltimore, Maryland. Now that's six years before he starts test flying this stuff. Okay. Like in the, in the 50s and into 1960s. So basically between now and 1959, mm-hmm. he apparently did thousands of test flights. Okay. Um, in various forms and states and stuff. Yep. Um, but yeah, this is, it, it's very interesting, right? I, I tried to pick some stuff, but it, it's hard, like, because some of it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what, what did, what did you get? Surely you've picked, handpicked some out yeah. of the 30 that you've scrolled through. So let, no, this is, this was actually one that I picked, right? This is the end of one of the stories. Let no adulation of the material senses turn thy head, fear not thou should it have served upon a charger by the request of some modern dancing maid. I think, like, if you think, look, if you look at that, the material senses turn thy head, fear not that thou should have served upon a charger, right? I think of some modern dancing maid. The cosmic has other tasks for thee. In due time thou wilt be named. So mote it be. Well, you know what's interesting too? Mm. And this sort of lends to the fact that we're covered, you know, in the, the refineries full of different spirit, spiritual stuff. Mm. So mote it be is actually how you end a what would be considered pagan ritual. Right. Um, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, the cloud that has shadowed the face of the full moon there on the Egyptian desert drifted by. The voice of the Sphinx ceased. The hush wind resumed its complaint more loud and querulous than before and the spirit of the man returned to him in his study in Baltimore. The flame of the candle was snuffed. Then by his desk light and with considerable awe he began to write what is recorded here. So is that, did he just not describe a test flight of some kind? Mm. Did he not go to the Sphinx and come back? You know, it's hard because it's a codex. It's like, 
how much do you actually read into it? Yeah, exactly. How much of what's being said mm. has any true meaning? Because yeah. you're looking like if he's if things are coded into it, mm. which is any. Have, did you find anything about anyone trying to like break the code? No, it, it, it's it was all a bit weird. This is the thing. Okay. It, it's another one of these rabbit holes that we end up here at UTC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't make a lot of sense. It would take more time to to dig through stuff. Yeah, look, to be able to find it. To be yeah. able, look, I mean, I, as I say, I'm, I'm well. I'm you got to remember they they took all this shit. So yeah. that's. Yeah. I'm probably about oh, ten hours into this research, you know, yep, yep. Um, and that's solid. You know, I've been reading a lot, as many articles as I can. Uh, Oh, here we go. Said the word of the Lord to the assembled angels. Thy work is well done. This great blast awoke the devil has not injured the temples thou built. It was planned by me that the polished surface of the limestone on the pyramid should dull and be transmuted by the release of energy from the sun so that there would be no recurrence. Neither was there sickness of radiation but only shock waves. They are dismissed. Let the creatures of the earth refine themselves and me. He's talking about a solar flare that reset the ice age you know what i mean like that's how i saw that one you know what i mean ah, it's talking about a solar flare okay yeah i didn't get i didn't get that out of it but let me just so yeah just, here we go just reread over it there. said the lord to the assembled angels thy work is indeed well done this great blast which awoke the devil has not injured the temples thou built mm. it was planned by me that the polished surface of the limestone of the pyramid should dull and be transmuted by the release of energy from the sun so there would be no recurrence Yep. Neither was there any sickness of radiation, but only shock waves. Thou art dismissed. Let the creatures of the earth refine themselves, refined themselves and me. Gotcha. And so in the valley of the Nile and elsewhere on the planet Earth, generation followed generation, century followed century, and many Let again. them refine themselves in and me. So No, and me. And yeah, and me. And okay. Me, yeah. So let me just take you to where I that took me. Mm. Um we, the previous uh, civilization needed to had had fallen away from God, right, mm-hmm. or, or had lost them themselves lost their way. in their technology, yeah, and they needed to be reset, yeah. And yeah. that doesn't sound like anyone. So, so, no, but but is this guy is this guy talking about um, advanced ancient civilization? I think so, man. In the fifties, like, is yeah. that what he's writing about? And this, see, this is um, listen to this. Uh, when the sun reached its zenith, its bright rays were refracted in a strange manner from the four sides of the Great Pyramid, which is really eight-sided, we know that. Mm. And directly above the pointed top, a brilliant, shining, transparent sphere formed instantly. In its center was a tiny reproduction of the sun itself, and it symbolically appeared as though the great sun was giving birth to its own image. This dazzling, brilliant sphere expanded to the diameter of half a league and began to spin as it hovered over the Great Pyramid. When the spinning motion had reached the relative speed of the Earth's rotation, the entire mass disintegrated in a shattering blast a thousand times more powerful than any unit of force that has decimated this area earlier. So he's talking about some sort of explosion or something mm. like that there, but there's all just this this strange um, and like writings, we, but, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we said before, though, how much of it is he putting together to simply get the the syllables and the letters and stuff to line up, mm. how much of it is sensical and how much of it is nonsensical mm. is what I'm getting at. It's it's it, And it's fascinating. Right? It's, it, 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 it ponders the mind. It does, you know. How about this one? As the centuries emerge, my creatures will regain their stature and maturity. Their languages and methods of thought transmission will evolve many times. And when they have again approached the wisdom of the great vibratory power of the atom, surely this effortless... Ever- Edifice. Oh, sorry, edifice, sorry, will be the uncontested revelation to signify that such force must be controlled by the love of God. Remember, there's a lot of God stuff in here. Like, ah, oh, it's 1950s it's America, 1950s, man. Yeah, so, um, you know, well, here we go. While mm. some are building the Temple of the Pyramid, others must be erecting the mighty Sphinx opposite, and this edifice must be a symbol of the all-powerful Adam in the only manner which such force can be controlled. I build the body of a lion, that king of nature's vibratory sounds, and place on the body the composite features of my most noble creations outside of heaven, man and his woman. Like, the writing is, and it it really speaks to us, right? Um, I was going to say, yeah, 
he's he's touching on a lot of points that, really, that we already that we know through that our spike research. Our interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he's listening to this, this, right? Uh, here was another one, right? Hearken well, angels, to my final specifications for the Great Pyramid. After the mighty stones are fitted in place and the form is complete, veneer the surface with rectangular sections of polished limestone. When this is done, make thou a reflecting agent from the matter at hand. Take a mixture of copper, feldspar and mercury and apply it to the limestone and the finished surface will shine and glow like no jewel thou hast ever seen. I, light, will be refracted and bent to the greater degree from the most polished cut stone to the pu- from the purest carbon. What did we say? The eight-sided pyramid would reflect light. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like... And focus it yep. at its point, at creating its point. this fucking ball yeah. that creates explosions. <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't know, man. This ball of fucking I, pure energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Maybe it was the fucking explosion that blew the casing stones off the fucking pyramid. I don't know, mate. I don't know, right? See, look at this. Complete the arcs into a circle at exact right angle. Bisect the east and west diameter with a north and south diameter. And lo and behold, in the line pointing north, thou shalt see a new constellation in the heavens. Polaris, my new star of the north for the planet Earth. Pause not to worship, but make haste and build the true temple of God on Earth for the generation to be rehabilitated and all future generations to come. Where is he getting this stuff? Like, yeah. it is... it. It's very religious. Like, with I don't have a huge knowledge of the Bible, but I've never but heard... But it sounds very religious, but he keeps talking about Egypt and he keeps talking about, you mm. know, almost like terraforming and, 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 you know, all those other bits and pieces. Like, yep. it's... Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like, it, and that's why I haven't... You can see why... I sort of picked a few of this apart and went, "What? Hang on a minute. What? What is he talking about?" Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you see that he's now said it's a codex, it's like, okay, now I've got to read through different stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, listen to this: as Lucifer observed his success, he waxed more eloquent by the day, entering the sanctums of the most high initiates. He postulated, "Polish thy mirrors, light thy." Light up thy candles, and when thou gate at thy countenance, ask not for inspiration from God or thy heart and solace from thy guardian angel, but rather exclaim, Ho, ho, how great am I! I have God's power, therefore I am equal to God. In fact, glory be, I am God. Not only that, I have Lucifer on my side. How can I fail? I have God's power, and more than he, I have an ally. What does that mean? You know, like, <laughs> and it just keeps going on. Like, it, and, could could you hearken that to something along the lines of the um, the speech that what's his name gave after uh, the Trinity bomb? Yeah, something like that. You, you know? know, like it, it's like thou hath yeah. fucking become Th- thou have become the destroyer death. of of worlds. Yeah, but that's um the the uh, uh, the buff, uh, buff, uh, the, uh, the buffer guard uh, Gita. That's yeah, wrong. Buffer guard, buffer guard Gita. Gita. Yeah, that's yeah. I think that's wrong. But you know what we mean. Um. But yeah, that's right. what I mean. Like I could, it's all, I almost feel like I could, you know, do a couple of podcasts. Oppenheimer. Just, Oppenheimer, yeah. That's what it was. I almost feel like I'd do a couple of podcasts just reading this aloud, you know, like, because it's... I, dude, I think you should. I think you should. You know, because he... I think, I, okay, nah, just fucking stop. Now let your homeboy hit it. <laughs> um, dude, I think you should make a couple of podcasts of you just, just reading it from start to finish. Mm-hmm. I fucking think it, you know, what can it hurt? Other people have done it. Okay, well, here's, here's, a, here's one of his poems called True Love. Yep. And it's just a short one, but it's not bad. Oh, there are more hidden treasures than pieces of eight. You can find them if you try. It's never too late. For these treasures, for these is treasure in beauty and beauty in love and the angels in heaven above will look down on envy on the two who have found the Trevor of beauty in love. All right, here's my theory. That's some of this stuff like that. Mm. That's what we do when we fuck off. As in, like, if you're sitting down at a desk, mm. fucking trying, like, writing things and thinking about things and mm. postulating, yeah, you're just writing and notes down. Things. Yeah, that's us fucking off and going on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's written a poem. Yeah. That's to me. <laughs> Uh, like you know what I mean, and that's and that's you, what you I mean. Think about it's like sitting there in the fifties with just a fucking radio, just a just a typewriter, and just going at it. That's you know? it. That's it. Um, like 
we've got so many things at, at, in the palm of our hand with a okay, smartphone. Okay, and here we go, right? Here we go. So here's something that's not just messing around. This one's called up and atom. Yep. Oh, the inverse square of the distance is the measure of a mass. That's why every liquid appears heavier than its gas. Ionized particles are floating in the air, seem to rule the earth, but yet they won't grow hair on a bald head. And yet, and we can tell you this without sounding too prophetic, that every piece of matter is really quite magnetic. <laughs> Therefore, many a bright man has acted like a fool, trying to prove why gravity has a push and pull. So that that's like a limerick, but he's there's some rules of physics in there like mm. that I know of, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, okay, he's done this little true love poem for his missus yep. and thrown that in there, yep. and then he's done this one that's actually given us some physics... <laughs> You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, it's so hard to... to but, st- and, but still, again, if he... Is he just... Waxing lyrical? Waxing lyrical about... Maybe. Things that he's, you know... What if he's what if he's created that poem to try and... Because he was thinking about something and he's, he's created a way to try and remember it like a rule. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like a, like a, you know, every Sunday I eat a pie for the, uh, the hierarchy of control. That's what yeah, I'm yeah. getting at. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he's 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 got a little limerick in his head that he now's that he now um, uses to remind yeah, himself like, of these yeah, things. Exactly, or, or through the thought process of creating that little poem, mm. because he thought about something for a period of time, it would have stuck in his memory. Mm. Okay, first thought, and then we'll leave this book alone. Uh, this is first thoughts. Okay, so we went to, we went went back to the end. Oh yeah, uh, and now we're gonna we're gonna end with his first thought. Mm-hmm. The creator of this work honestly feels that any effort of man compared to the magnificence of the works of God is but the puny cry of a newborn babe. To get to get the feeling he was a little religious. However, down through the ages, <laughs> men have continued to trumpet as great lit each little straw that some individual has grasped reveals the glory of God. Okay. The printed and the transmitted word has multiplied the adjectives of adulation and the granaries are assuredly overflowing with a harvest of praise for man. Poor, ignorant humanity on this condemned sphere. How long must it be before you learn the lesson that only God is great? Cannot you sense the spiritual famine that may just be around the corner? Cannot you find the true meaning of the word neighbor? That's an interesting one. Is justice sold over the bargain counter? Must there be a profit in compassion? Truthfully, the dialects tell us that matter is always becoming in its materialistic change. But who will be the first attempt to change the element or spirit of the atom of love? Sad, sad fallen man. Where will you seek stock, market margin, if the heavens ignite? That's interesting. Enough. What this narrator means to convey is that the little straws of wisdom in this manuscript may rank and compare with the other straws in the harvested shock. They may be that great and no more. It is also expressed hope that some future critic will consider the finished art rather than the technique, the palette, and the brushes or the canvas. I feel like he's struggling a little bit with the existential angst of the... The nuclear bomb, yeah, splitting the ap- atom, yeah, um, man striving to create technology to to um, emulate p- the powers of God. You know that yeah. that that scientific. See, this was the fifties. We're probably a little bit more familiar with the with concepts. The concept now, mm. in terms of of um, because we've got multiple different technologies that that have have been quoted as like you know um, being the power of God yeah, in terms yeah, of like cloning yeah. Yeah. gene fucking um, gene therapy therapy yeah so like the power of God in that regard mm. then you've got um, the other technologies well, you got to remember like too he's he's AI, witnessed he's witnessed the, yeah he's witnessed World War Two you know like there's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a whole mindset that we don't. We're, we're, we're not in. We're, we're not beyond. in and we can't understand. Yeah. However, what, what a thought I had when you were talking about that, what if this guy did know Tesla? Tesla shared some of his free energy concept with him. Yep. And then behind the scenes, can you imagine being in a workshop 
in the late 40s, early 50s, mm. and then you hit the go button, and this little flying saucer that you've made takes off. Yeah. You've just discovered free energy. Yeah. Imagine the existential angst you've now got. It's like, holy shit. Like, mm. what, are, what are we... Oh. Like, Holy shit! Indeed, yeah. Like you know, ha- definitely. How 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 do we even contemplate that? Mm. Uh, and I think looking at this, he's he's sort of dealing with that as well. And he's like, I have to get this out in some sort of form because mm. it's over and over again. He's concerned about the government taking it away, which yeah. obviously they did in the end. Yep. However, well, if he knew Tesla, mm. he he know what happened to Tesla exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, that's that that's that was just a look into the mind of Otis, yep. and, and I really um, had to had to do that because yep. I'm like, wow, um, I didn't quite. No, that was that was interesting, and you get a you get a good feel for yeah. I think where he's at, where he's from. So mm. take me to the next spot. Where are we going now? So the, the notes that I made, obviously, we just read a little bit of it then, but the notes that I made. Uh, when I had finished reading, um, woven throughout the poems are random technical details, and we did see that. Yes. Um, the book was written in 52, and he was shut down in 59. So so he had seven years from when he wrote this codex mm-hmm. to when he was shut down. Yep. So that means he had seven years of development. Now, some of that stuff, as I said, it sort of sounds like he already went on a test flight. Yeah. Uh, and came back and then wrote about it. That's yep. basically what I sort of got out of that. But again, it's hard because of all the codex, right? Yeah. Um, so seven years' work. Strange concepts on atoms. I didn't come to that bit because it's it's really far out. He's talking about three atoms and it's one, one's the God atom, one's the love atom, and one's the cosmic atom or something like that. Mm-hmm. And these are his concepts that he used. Uh, universal energy, triangles, angles, uh, magnetism, in the pages that I read, it was wound, all that stuff was wound through a lot of that. Um, yeah. You know, but again... Well, it almost sounds like, you know, somewhat along the lines of the Holy Trinity mm. that you can you can only assume with all of the religious references. But you've got to remember too, Tesla was about three, six, and nine, and he was yep. about triangles, right? He's like, if you understood the power of three, six, and nine, then you'd master the universe, basically. Yep. Um, and what I did get... Because I sort of had tabs open on Tesla because I thought I was going to move on, but I never did. Mm-hmm. Um, reading some of Tesla's work, this guy reminded me of Tesla. Like you can actually sort of see in the way he does things mm. that he was a protege of Tesla. Yeah. Because of just the the way that he operates and the way that he's processed his ideas and even like the writing that he does. Tesla's writing was very poetic at times mm-hmm. um, and very. Uh, mysterious, you know. It's like, oh, if you understood three six nine, you'd unlock the secrets of the universe. It's like, yeah, well, thanks, Nick. What does that mean? You know what I mean? Yep. Like, yep. Um, yeah. Any more information? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is the the I, and we didn't get to that, which is interesting. Um, we didn't pick that up now. Another excerpt from this: the reason this work was created is for the fact it reveals and conceals, for contained. Within these pages, in simple words and phrases, yet hard to decipher, are the complete specifications for a fourth dimensional gravity engine that unifies the straight line and the curve. Like he actually says that. Like it, that's not at the start though. Like that's a bit of a random one. Yeah. Um, he definitely wrote it, so I found multiple references to the book once I started getting into the rabbit hole of it. Mm hmm. Yeah, he definitely wrote it, and it's it's been one of those ones that I think people have been trying to decipher for many years. Yeah. Uh, I looked to see if someone had built one, right? Because obviously I just showed you the blueprints, didn't I? Like I showed you the blueprints. Yeah, um, of there's the Utron. Of the Utron. Right? And we can see here, here's the internal clockwise rotating assembly. Okay, we've got side elevation. We've got capacitor plates. Like seriously, this is proper blueprint, blue, blueprints. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the outer utrons, um, side elevation, the trunnion, uh, you know, you could build 12 of those. So, like, I thought, with all of this stuff, surely someone's built one. Yeah. And I came across a page, and it was the, it was a conglomerate of people that had started to build one, 
but it hadn't been added to since 2015. Yep. And there was like this dodgy YouTube video of this thing spinning. Um, wasn't really much to look at, so I didn't bring it up. It was basically just, it looked like the inside of that thing and it was just spinning around. And they said in the video that they were using a bit of string to spin it because it was only one half. Yeah. Right? So it was the one half of the spinning. And right. then obviously you've got to put the other one on top to yep. make it. And then after that, there's nothing. It's like though that last post in, it was like something like November 2015, not a single post on the page, no information, no further articles, nothing. Um, okay. Which I found fascinating. You know, it's just, that it, as I said, this was another weird rabbit hole mm. where uh, it's like the mortar all over again. It's like, well, here's the blueprints. Has someone built it? Yeah, no, not really. But you can buy a model of it. Well, you could off the same website, but that was in 2015. Yeah, okay. So, you know, Interesting. why? Interesting. You know, here's, here's the other plans. Did here's they the just, other capacity Did they fizzle plans. under their own power or, or were they... Were they stopped yeah, I don't by know, the bro. alternate government? I don't know. It's an interesting question, right? Goddamn interdimensional aliens. So, yeah, according to the YouTube video, and these guys are Australian, actually, mm-hmm. uh, according to the title, with our Australian, with one half working users you can string to spin it. However, not much else as far as proof of concept. Like, you would think that someone had got further. Yeah. Um, however, again, I had to dig a little for this stuff. It wasn't like it, it, it came up. You know, if mm-hmm. if you skin the surface, you just get Otis Carr the fraud. Yeah. So no one's built one as yet, which sort of led me to um, to Mister Hayes and his three D printer. Um, Sorry, I'm just. If you could see me now, I look weird. I'm just throwing an idea new? around in my mind. Um, with those accumulators. Sorry, I'm just mm. thinking out loud. No, wax lyrics with like that. spinning. So if you were to have opposite poles, and then as the yeah, never mind. Sorry, that was bad radio. No, that's but okay. I was yeah, just I, thinking out loud. Yeah, see, this is the thing. I'm looking at this yeah. thing here. You're doing the same the thing. You're doing the same thing that I did last night. It's yep. like okay, now I can see pieces and part part of it, and you've got a mechanical mind as well. So yep. it's like okay, now I've got these capacitor plates. I'm seeing them come together. I'm seeing the utrons on the outside. I'm seeing whatever's the the, the middle part, mm-hmm. and yeah, it, it's spinning diametrically to each other, using opposite magnetism um, and variations. It all really depends on how the accumulators work. To be perfectly honest, that's where I came to last night. Yeah, uh, but what that led me to a guy called Ralph Ring. Right. We, we, now we've got Vicky Verma and Ralph Ring. Uh, he was an engineer. Okay, he was an engineer. Um, Maybe this is some secret brotherhood. Yeah, RR and where, VV. RR and VV. Yeah. <laughs> but he was an engineer that worked with Otis for many years during the 50s. Yep. Okay. Um, and they called their project Project Camelot. Okay. And this was this is a complete left turn. However, I have to tell you this because I looked up Project Camelot on yep. the internet and it came up. I see this is the notes, right? Which if you look up, Look that up online, comes back with it was the code name for a counterinsurgency study begun by the US Army in 1964. Its full name was Methods for Predicting and Influencing Social Change and Internal War Potential, mm-hmm. with particular targets on Latin America. Some con- controversy arose when professors from South America found out and labelled it imperialistic, uh, so it was cancelled in July 865. However, research was continued more discreetly. And then I just sort of then I went, oh, that's right. I'm 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 in 2021, and I looked at the world and went, yeah, the research definitely continued a little bit. It's not didn't it what? Yeah, it's yeah. not exactly discreet anymore. No, it, it, look what I've got down the bottom there, FFS. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For fuck's sake, <laughs> it's like here I am trying to escape and look at anti gravity, and I'm I'm pulled back into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's a complete complete left turn. Let's get back on track. So according to Ralph Ring. They built many prototypes, including a 45-foot manned aircraft, which he said moved 10 miles at the speed of light. Okay, Now, yep. this is quoting him. I was with two engineers when we piloted the 45-foot craft about 10 miles. I thought it hadn't moved. I thought it had failed. I was completely astonished when we re- realized we had returned with rocks and plants from our destination. It was a dramatic excess. It was more like a kind of teleportation. Instantaneous. Instantaneous. Yeah. 
And that's how come he didn't realise. It's like... And, well, and he felt no inertia from the, the travelling exactly. sort of thing. It obviously, he would have been torn apart if there was any any form of inertia And happening. this comes into the sentence that, that, that changed everything, right? Right, right. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. <laughs> and one of Ralph's... I can uh, feel movement. Yeah, one of, <laughs> one of Ralph's other quotes was, you must always work with Mother Nature. Force is never necessary. The laws of the physical universe are very simple. Yeah. And I and that sort of echoed with me as well. Uh-huh. It's like we have forced ourselves upon nature. Well, back to the bit we were talking about before, where we got stalled on fossil fuels. Yeah. Was that stalling deliberate? Exactly. You know? Was yeah. there ulterior motives to purely just profit mm. that we were talking about? Mm. Was there a stalling? And that's where all this um, demonic Satan... Yeah. good versus evil mm. um, line of thinking goes in terms of the evil part being the pushing the forces against nature yeah, forcing like against nature yeah <clears throat> the combustion engine we basically harness explosions exactly yeah sort of thing to, yeah. to create it's, power it's, it's eight it's, you know we have many cylinders there's as many we're, cylinders we're not small exactly bombs working under. with nature no and whereas there's, they're stating there that the, the principles of the universe are actually pretty are simple very simple if you were just to focus upon them yeah, instead yeah. of having to create explosions to create power. Which again echoes Tesla's work. That's what he was yep. about as yep. well, right? And there was another thought I had, uh, and it was when it was it was like pre podcast, years and years ago, I looked in, into explorers, right? And because there was a lot of exploring done in the seventeen hundreds into the eighteen hundreds where people were materialist materialistically wealthy enough to have ships and go to these far away places. Mm-hmm. And then come back to the the civilization, as it were, London and the, yeah, yeah, the cities yeah. of the world. And there's all these stories of these explorers coming back, going, "Hey, hey, hey! Stop what you're doing. The the way that we're doing science is not right. There's there's yeah. there's magnificence out there that you can't even begin to comprehend." Mm-hmm. And basically, we said, "Ah, oh, yeah, no, we can switch lights on and off. Shut up. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've yeah. got this. Don't yeah. worry about it." Um, so we ignored the people that we sent out to discover the new way yep. when they came back. And this is sort of echoing that thought as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, now, I'm going to read the article, uh, do some more to the article. Actually, no, I won't do that. I'll come back. So it's interestingly, and you'll like this one because I know you love uh, coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. Coinky dinks. Coinky dinks, that's what I was trying to say. In 1947, know anything else that happened to do with UFOs in 1947? Uh, <clears throat> Roswell, uh, car prepared documentation and later in 1959 receive a US patent number which is 2.912.244 which I have actually looked at mm. and it is real Yeah, uh, for a project of his OTC X1 despite the US Patent and Trademark Office had not recognised the idea of perpetual motion machines for a long time and car's device used just such a principle. So... In 1947, which was Roswell, hmm. which then made me think, was the Roswell crash Otis testing out his theory? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he, he just lost his biscuit for a second yep. uh, and crashed it. Um, or, you know, like why in 1959, just before they shut him down, mm-hmm. do they agree to his patent? Proof of concept. Right, right okay. They know it's real. Yeah. Right, and then they steal it after they patent it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hang on, I'm lost. Didn't we just say he applied? Oh, so he applied for it in forty seven. He applied for it in forty seven. It was not granted until nineteen fifty nine. Right. Okay. Literally months before. Yes. They came and stole it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Not uh, so lesson for all the kids out there: don't paint in your shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they know they're coming for you. So this is an article uh, from nineteen fifty seven. 29th of October, 1957, the Hartford Courant, uh, which I imagine is a Baltimore uh, newspaper. And I'm just going to read the article, okay? Harnessing gravity power to machine is claimed. Baltimore, October 28. A group of Baltimoreans claim today they've been able to utilize gravity in circular motion machines capable of powering everything from hearing aids to space cruisers. Otis T. Carr first announced his claim at a news conference called uh, called by OTC Enterprise Incorporated, which he is president. He further detailed his claims today 
in an interview and demonstration of a crude model of a circular motion machine, which he said was the principle of a free energy circular foil spacecraft he can build if someone puts up the money. He said the machine can be adapted to devices of any size and produce continuous power absolutely free of dissipation. Okay, and that's obviously the problem with modern power sources is that we the fuel there's always a, well, a it's in, usually lost through heat. Exactly. Push pull and we always lose power, right? Yeah. Uh, its immediate application car said would be in a spacecraft, either manned or remote controlled, which would be able to hedge hop amongst the planets in controlled flight. It could land or take off as desired on the Earth, the moon or any planets in the Earth's solar system, he said. Neither Carr nor any of his associates has any formal education in science or engineering. They said their claims are based on the most simple practical applications of natural laws and discoveries of the giants of science and mathematics. 52-year-old native Elkins, W.V. Carr, says he has financed his research with his own modest funds through his private funds supplied by friends. He claims to have built thousands of working models. Carr and his associates said they are withholding full disclosure of their claim developments. They added this is only a, to avoid suppression of what they consider concepts which could revolutionise the technology and economy of the world. Mm-hmm. That's a big statement there, right? Well, if you're creating devices that can power themselves, you you are, you know, creating technology to change the world. Absolutely. Because without a fuel tank, nothing nothing still powers itself yeah that's whether right. it's a battery or a, nothing or yeah, an engine. it's got to have some sort of perpetual motion it. you know has either never been done or it's been has suppressed. been withheld yeah one of the two yeah car said copies of a 16 page copywriter brochure outlining his claims in general terms were sent last thursday by registered mail to president eisenhower members of the cabinet and the atomic energy commission he promised full disclosure of designs, principles, and application of the discoveries he claims as soon as the government, industry, or anyone else comes forth with the funds to produce them and guarantees the information will be made available to the world. Yeah. That's probably where he went wrong, I'd say. Yeah. Um, Carr said his project represents 16 years of research. Okay, so we're in 1958. Yep. 16 years of research goes back to 1942. Mm-hmm. He registered his patent or tried to register his patent in 47. So he was already five years in to his research. Yep. Tesla dies in 43. Yep. Okay, so we put those that little timeline into play there. Gotcha. Um, 16 years of research and application inspired principally by Albert Einstein and based on the discoveries of Einstein, Newton, Bacon, Archimedes and others. Because remember, Tesla was out of favor back then. Mm-hmm. You, could, you couldn't have said back then that he was inspired by Tesla. Mm-hmm. He said the same free energy which causes the Earth to rotate on its axis and orbit around the sun will turn a machine he described as two cones joined at their circular bases when the rotation of such a machine reaches a certain velocity relative to the Earth's orbital velocity, Carr said it will take off. The principle on which Carr said such circular motion machines would operate that any vehicle accelerate to an axis rotation relative to its attractive inertial mass, the Earth, immediately becomes activated by free space energy and acts as an independent force. Those last two paragraphs Mm -hmm. is what blew my mind Mm. at 11.30 last night. Yep. Okay? But before we get there, let's let's finish the article. Let's finish with Carr, and I want to come back to those two sentences, okay? Righto. Because that is... is, So where are you going, Vicky? Going going to Vicky. Going back to Vicky. Going to come back to Vicky, yep. Okay. Uh, so where are we? Inspired by Tesla, during an interview with the New York Herald Tri- Tribune in 1911, Tesla said, my flying machine will neither have wings nor propellers. You might see it on the ground and you would never guess that it was a flying machine. You'll be able to move at will through the air in any direction with perfect safety. That was mm-hmm. Tesla in 1911. Unfortunately, neither, Tesla never had an opportunity to convert those ideas into reality due to the political and budget issues. But his disciple car claimed to have achieved harnessing power from gravity and built a spacecraft using it. Okay, pop-ups. In the 1950s, Carr was searching for investors for his sources and free energy program. He became friends with a Baltimore man named Ralph Elsmo, who owned an advertising enterprise. After finding out about Carr's ideas, Elsmo offered him a place developing his inventions using Tesla technology. Later, he set OTC Enterprise Incorporated. 
In 57, Carr was promoted by advertisers as the greatest scientist and called the creator of the solution to power sources, free energy produced by the Corotto gravity motor, which we've had a look at tonight. Yep. His most controversial, controversial invention was powered by the Utron electric accumulator, described as a fourth dimensional space vehicle, or the OTC X1 spacecraft, in other words, a flying saucer. I want you to hang on to fourth dimensional space vehicle as well. I want you to hang on to fourth dimensional. Yep. There's that picture that I already showed you. Yep. Okay. Carr could not have developed this technology if Tesla had not shared his ideas of anti gravity propulsion with him years ago. In 58, Carr claimed to have produced an anti gravity technology that could be applied in a spacecraft. He asked for funding of around $20 million to construct a manufacturing facilities and build a machine, the OTC X1, that could fly to the moon or any other planet in the solar system. And that was the picture I posted today. Mm -hmm. uh, he even approached the Pentagon and pitched them his OTC1 concept. Being interested, the Pentagon sent a team to investigate Carr's offer. Yep. They visited his office in Baltimore and found his model useless. If you read the article... He took all the good stuff out to show the government. He's not going to. He's not going to give it away. Yeah. He's already said that, right? Yeah. He's not going to show. He stated them. that multiple times. Yeah. In, in 1958, the FBI started an investigation into Carr's new spacecraft model. And they were concerned that it might attract the Soviet Union. Cold War. Everyone's a red. Everyone's a red coat. Yep. Uh, but someone tipped them about criminal activity. They had reports of him selling some unregistered stock. So basically, they dug into him, found something they could use against him. Yeah. Went and observed a few of his tests and went, oh, no, mm -hmm. he's actually onto something. Yeah. And we're just going to take it. During a project, Camelot Carr and technician Ralph Ring had been closely working on the design of flying saucers. In the late 1950s and early 60s, the two of them built a flying saucer powered by rotating electromagnets in conjunction with a number of small, ingenious, capacitor-like devices called utrons. They constructed several small ships and a 45-foot craft that flew 10 miles at the speed of light. And that was... Oh, that was the... Um, that's yeah. the quote from this Ralph Ring the there. Yeah. yeah, I was with two other engineers and we piled the 45 foot craft about 10 miles. I thought it hadn't moved. I thought it had failed. I was completely astonished when we realized that we had returned with samples of rocks and plants from our destination. It was a dramatic excess. It was all was more like a kind of teleportation. You must always work with Mother Nature. Force is never necessary. The laws of the physical universe are very simple. Yeah. And there's the article. According to Carr, any vehicle accelerated to the axis rotation relative to its attractive inertial mass immediately becomes activated by free space energy and acts as an independent force. I want to come back to that. <clears throat> I need some, need some liquids. On April 15, 1959, hundreds of people gathered in Oklahoma City for Otis Carr's disc launch. They were invited to, launch, to the launch of his 45-foot craft that would rise 400 or 600 feet in the air. However, the launch was postponed as Carr had been admitted to hospital diagnosed with a lung hemorrhage. Sounds like a fairly good excuse if you're going to mm. miss something. I mean, look, everyone can say, oh, I'm it's okay just... okay with a lung hemorrhage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it sounds fairly um, fairly legitimate if that if that is what happened, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but everyone jumps on that, oh, he was a fraud, he just made it up, you know. Um, and there's the, some of the pictures. Again, you can never, I can never find a picture that gives me that writing clearly. Ah, uh, right, yeah. Uh, Carr attracted the attention of World War II veteran army officers Wayne Aho and Daniel Fry, who accompanied him and helped his project keep going. He claimed to launch for the moon on December 7, 1959. Ah, oh, that's good. In 1957, Carr prepared the documentation and later in 59 received the pattern. We've said this before. And you can see here, and just, just for... Just for um, oh, you got a link. Just so we pattern. can, we can yep. understand, there it is there. Otis okay. T. Carr, 1959. Here's the pictures. I've actually downloaded those pictures as well. Yep. Um, you know, if you have a look at that one, gives you it gives you more detailed um, schematics. These ones are quite interesting. Yep. Um, however, yeah, just so you understand, we did actually have a look at the pattern. Fuck you, pop up. Yep. <laughs> uh, despite the fact that the United States Patent and Trademark Office did not recognise the idea of perpetual motion machines for a long time, and Carr's device used just such a principle. And here we go. And this is the different of the story, right? So now I said he sort of faded into into the background. Mm -hmm. This was the other. This was one of the very few inconsistencies too. And the same, just for as far as Ralph Ring is concerned, I couldn't. It's like I found some stuff on him, but not a lot. I'd like to dig a bit further, maybe for a future episode. However, his story was consistent, right? You know how we measure the stories; like they don't. He didn't change. He's yeah. told the same story for yep. fifty years. Yeah, you know. Um, in 1960, 
Carr was found guilty of selling unregistered stock in Oklahoma, and in January he was charged in fraudulent of 50 grand. He was sent to prison for 14 years. Again, I think that's a little bit dramatic. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, his lab was destroyed and all his prototypes were seized by the government. His team members were asked not to make any contact with each other. After that, Carr lived in Pittsburgh until his death in 1982, continuing to try and interest investors in his technology. And I think this last... And this is why I'll give Vicky Verma his, his dues. He's a good writer. I like it. Otis Carr was a victim like Tesla, who was left unnoticed at broke at the end of his life. People often talk about the intervention of the government and other forces opposing the advancement of Carr's flying saucers. Besides that, opponents of alternative energy regularly report fraud on the part of Carr. And that's like I said earlier. If you skim the surface on the internet... He's, that's yeah, basically he, what you get. That's what you get, yep. right? It, supposedly, he invented flying saucers. How he was a fraud, so don't listen to him. Yep, right. So that's car. Mm -hmm. So before we move back to the census, because I want to talk about that. But what do you reckon? I mean, now that I've presented that to you, mm. do you think he built it? Do you think it was real? I'm, I'm. Look, I'm, I'm willing to, um, you know, go down the go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Sort of, you know, like, I don't know, man, it's, it's been a, it's been a lot, um, to take in. Yeah. In, you know, it's, it's like cramming, mm. but at the same time, you know, it goes back to so many other things. Like, I don't, I don't understand why not. See, what I did is that I looked back through the lens of everything we know now about, you know, all the things that have come out recently, UFOs are real, Bob Lazar, you know, all the things that we've discussed numerous times here. Yeah. And now you add Carr's story into the mix. Mm. There's every chance that he got it right. And yeah. a lot of these discs are variations of his technology. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know like, like um, think of, think of the shape of that. Think of you know the the same the same ignore the shape for a minute, but think of the the characteristics of flight yeah um, that he describes describe that he describes, and then think of the ones that like Fravor describes mm. that the Tic Tac's doing. Mm. Um, it seems to be similar. it seems to be similar similarities between mm. the two mm. in terms of their characteristics. Mm. Um, if you can move at that speed through uh, air with zero inertial force something's happening like how it's been described before anti-gravity technology where it, it bends um, space time around the craft itself mm. which would then also lend itself to the um, the uh, what are they called the different medium vehicles yeah, yeah, in yeah. terms trans of medium. trans medium yep. that's the word i'm looking for yep. yeah craft in terms of being able if you can do it with air it's if you look at if you take his quote in terms of um the laws of nature being really quite simple mm. well as above so below you mm. could do it to water as well mm. you know it would bend it would still it would bend to things so you could move through water move through air unencumbered yeah. Well, I want to. I, so now that we're on that track, I want to come back to the two things that he said, because in my mind, I now understand, or at least how his invention would work. Yeah. The same free energy which causes the Earth to rotate on its axis, orbit around the Sun, when the rotation of the machine reaches a certain velocity relative to the Earth's velocity, it will take off. That makes sense to me, right? Because hmm. what is the Earth floating in? You know, this is the 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 dark the dark matter, or you know, mm. the antimatter, or whatever it is that keeps the Earth suspended. Yep. In its place. Yep. If you could match that on a vibration level and on a on a on a as it says it says on a on a as the same spinning as the Earth. Yep. Then it becomes irrelevant. You've actually matched what's going on, mm -hmm. and therefore you are one with the, whatever the energy is. That is keeping our planet suspended. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. That's how they work. That's yeah. the propulsion, right? You've actually you've tapped in to 
the energy of the universe, mm-hmm. which is a crazy concept. However, it makes sense to me, right? Mm. Any vehicle accelerated to the to an axis rotation relative to its attractive inertial mass. So what he's saying there, it doesn't matter if it's Earth or anything else, yep. immediately becomes activated by the free space energy and acts as an independent force. Yep. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? If you can... Even though gravity and rotational spin and everything differs planet to planet, once you match those forces, yeah, you take on the powers of that planet. And if you're working on... Uh, I wonder how that works when you're in between planets. That was my question. Mm. Right? I don't know about in between planets. Yeah. Uh, that was that was the thing. That was the one thing that I didn't... I couldn't quite compute. Yeah. However, you'd imagine... So, if this... These utrons, these accumulators... If they're sensing the, the magnetism of the medium that you're in... Mm-hmm then potentially they could adjust. Yeah. You know, you're not... You, 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 you're starting to spin this thing up and then it reaches a certain point on whatever you're on and it just takes off. Yeah. Right? I imagine in between planets, that energy is still there, right? If you're tapping into the universal energy that is is making the planet rotate and, you know, the, the medium rotate or whatever it is, mm-hmm. that's the energy you're tapping into. Yeah. The... The, the mass is not really relative, if you know what I mean. You understand what I'm trying to say there? Like, you're using the energy that is keeping yeah. that medium in place yep. to take off. Yep. So, in between planets, it, it makes no difference. Yep. Um, if the thing that you have adjusts on the run. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you got to think of it like um, swapping Wi Fi signals. Yeah, as something you, like that. Yeah, you, move, you could do that. As yeah, you yeah, move yeah, between yeah. houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As yeah. you walk out of range of one. Yeah. You then adjust to the new range of the other. Mm. My only my only thought process with that is, if you feel no inertia when you're on the craft, does the craft still have inertia, or does it stop dead? Like, what I'm trying to get at is, you need. Let's say you're in a car and it's running out of fuel, mm. and you need to roll to the service station to get there. Mm. Mm-hmm. So if if you before you can get there, if your craft stops, you can never tune to the next frequency yeah. as the last frequency loses power. Mm. Um, I don't know. We I could be way off track. But yeah, that's just that's just my thought process in terms of traveling between planets. Yeah. Um, but you but you understand quite simply now how you would take off on a planet though, don't you? Like if you can yeah. match the rotation yes. and match the vibration and the magnetism, then it becomes irrelevant. Yeah. And you're you just, now you're now operating at in you're the operating fourth dimension. Like a like a planet. You're operating in you're the fourth doing. dimension, man. Yep. That's what you're doing. Yeah. Right. You've transcended the the forces of nature. Mm. And you're operating in the ether. That's right, because because you are operating like a planet mm. in terms of you're spinning. The craft has become like a planet. Yeah. Does that mean if we were to put the same effects onto the Earth as what you can, the OTC X one, mm. would be able to travel? Maybe turn the whole planet into a fucking. <laughs> To the whole planet in a spaceship. Like if if that's what we're doing, if yeah. if with a spaceship we're emulating the powers that that f- cause the planet to spin mm. and orbit the way it does and Within gravitational the forces and sort of stuff. Yeah. If that's what we're doing, if we were able to then, because I'm sure something to do with like the different lift and acceleration you get depends on how much your interacting with those forces mm. so like your spin speed you know mm. it takes off at a certain speed mm. when you've hooked in mm. but then you have to increase your spin speed to then increase your elevation yeah ele- ele- elevation and acceleration you'd imagine that's that would be how you'd control that mm. wouldn't would you mm. not mm. possibly mm. that seems to be you know in terms of a simple understanding yeah that's how you would do it so if we were to be able to increase the spin of the earth or something mm. would you be able to possibly make the earth now act like the spacecraft that you've designed to emulate 
the powers that the earth taps into that's you know an saying? interesting question would we be able to just send teleport then, that motherfucker around yeah and then that that also lends to a a question about um you know the earth being in its perfect position you know the why we can get a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse and stuff like that mm-hmm. was it parked here you know what i mean yeah <laughs> you know exactly this is the equidistance that we need let's park it here well speaking of speaking of parking a planet i'm pretty sure i can't there's this i think it's venus yeah venus like was written about appearing in the solar system yeah it was being stuff created yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. you know in ancient mythology yeah. and stuff like that across like a lot of things across multiple different places yeah, on yeah. earth all of a sudden this other thing there's appeared a lot of in things the sky. about venus yeah. being born into the sky and, and speaking of venus just to tie it back into this yeah there's fbi documents saying that tesla was from venus Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. There's literally FBI documents saying Tesla yeah. is an alien from Venus. That's right. And tried to share <laughs> share the details of how they parked fucking Venus yeah. in the sky. That's right. In the first place. That's right. Dude, it's all coming together. Yeah. So, man, look, I I want to postulate some more. Like, this was only last night. That how, I, much, how much closer to the sentence are we? That's it. That's it. That's the two oh, sentences. That, yeah. Oh, the two sentences. The two sentences. Two, that was yeah, it. Yeah, right. Yeah, the same sorry, free you energy. Sorry, you, you needed to set it up better oh, for sorry, me. Mate, I was waiting I for another sentence. <laughs> no, no, no. That is. They're the, they're the, go, basically, go, basically I've back, got boom. Run, run back over it for me. Okay. So Just I want, you, I, I want and, I, and I want you and I want everybody that is interested in this stuff, if you are, you obviously listen to this podcast, and thank you very much for that, have a Put this into your brain and look up the OTC X1 blueprints. You can find those ones pretty easily on the internet. OTC, UTC, it's all... It's all, it's, it's all coming it's together, all coming man. It's coming together, bro. Coinky dinks all over the place. Okay, so the two sentences were, the same free energy which causes the Earth to rotate on its axis and orbit around the sun when the rotation of the machine reaches a certain velocity relative to the Earth's velocity, it will take off. Any vehicle accelerated to an axis rotation relative to its attractive inertia mass inertial mass immediately becomes activated by the free space energy and acts as an independent force and i'll put boom down the bottom because once i actually boom. i read that i was like that is how that's, they work that's well that's why okay here it is. Here it is, ladies the and gentlemen. The fourth dimension is the Here ether, is. man. The fourth dimension is the ether enhancing the ether. Whatever yeah. that is. Whatever that is. Mm. I was going a separate direction, but I like that. I like that. Continue. Hold on to that. Mm. So, you think about the solar system. You think about galaxies, mm. the way in which they uh, align themselves. Mm-hmm. And, the you know, they have this this dense star in the middle of them Mm. and or like a galaxy actually that's wow that just popped into my mind imagine a star emitting light and emitting energy Mm. although it's dense if you think about gravity it has a gravitational pull to have hold everything in place right but it's emitting the heat and the light and mm. everything like that. So you would call that a positive, like a positive um, Ion. Di- diode. Diode, yeah, yeah, positive diode, yeah. You think of galaxies. Mm. Galaxies all have a black hole, in a supermassive center. black hole yeah. in the middle. Yeah, They suck everything in, mm. light, energy, mm. stuff like that. Mm. Think of that as, an, as a negative, like a cathode. Mm. So you... We're now, instead of eliminating gravity out of things, we're looking at electromagnetic spectrums. Yes, that's right. Now you look you look at the two halves of the saucer placed upon a, a, on top of each other, mm-hmm. and the way the the what were they the utron fucking thingies accumulators yep. accumulators were spaced intermittently around and in between those it kind of looked like a wheel with spokes yeah and in between the utron accumulators it looked like there was like rectangular magnets yeah yeah plates yeah 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 yeah. plates yeah well 
they look like blocks of magnets. They are, yeah. They look like sure rectangular they blocks yeah. of magnets. They are, yeah. So are you just emulating the like outside of just what he said with the earth, the forces that cause the earth to spin mm. and... Um, well, therefore, it's the universal energy. That same energy that's causing the Earth to spin is causing the star to spin, is causing the solar system to spin, is causing the galaxy to spin, is and it's just... That's it. And away we go. So the reason it's all circular and things are rotating inside it is because it's just emulating that pattern that forms naturally in the universe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Vibration, so you're, frequency, you're, you're, magnetism. You're, well, it's just... Outside of that, you're just purely constructing a solar system. Yeah, like a like the mobiles, you know, that we all create in in fucking primary yeah, yeah, school. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 With the solar system rotating yeah. around the sun. Yeah, you're just building a model like that. Mm. But but instead of just foam balls, you're giving all of the different planets. You're giving all the different parts a positive and negative, negative charge, charge in order to and make a, and a positive negative polarity mm. of magnetism to make the forces inside that model push mm. against each other to create this perpetual spin. Exactly. I mean, what if what if the you know we talked about drilling down to the basic forms? What if it is po- positive, negative, electromagnetic, and then you've got the ether that you just hook into? Man, you're using what is presented to us in the universe you're using that flow instead of trying to force yourself against it you're harnessing that and off you're just, you go man you just nothing's new under the sun that's right you're just copying what is put right in front of exactly. you exactly and this is the the coded messages that they're sending mm. when it's like the basic principles it's are all really very quite sim- basic. Yeah, it's pretty all simple you, yeah. all you need to do is emulate the way the universe is put together. Yeah. What they don't say is the way that galaxies look like solar systems mm-hmm. look like mm-hmm. like a, a spiral um, Fibonacci sequence. Mm. You know, it's like that's the and power then, of the And then the you Earth. expand out the galaxy looks like tree limbs which look like brain things which look like, you know what I mean? It's yep. all the same, man. Yeah. And all you're doing is harnessing yeah. that flow and so harnessing that of making, energy that's already there. So instead of creating energy from burning things and Dead creating dinosaurs, explosions, yeah. Yeah. you're using you, the energy that's around us all the time. What you really need to do is copy what's already been put in front of you. Mm-hmm. Why are you trying to reinvent the wheel? The yeah. energy already exists. You don't need to get it from elsewhere. And it's kind of cool to think about the fact that maybe Tesla, if, if Carl was friends with Tesla until his death... I imagine Tesla, after he was ridiculed and had all his stuff stolen, probably didn't care very much. He was probably pretty liberal with his ideas and understandings with mm-hmm. his real friends. Yeah. And he gave Carr, the the man from Venus, gave Otis Carr, mm. that little, whatever it was, the Utron or whatever that little <laughs> piece was, that yes. allowed him to harness the energy of the universe. Yeah. We'll never know. We'll never know, man. It just goes into the file of another one of those mysteries. Mm. Yeah. Well, well listen, maybe maybe one day we will know. Maybe one day. Well, look, if it but, continues. But maybe it'll come in the form of someone else's someone else's development. Yeah, that's right. You know, it'll be a, a bit, government's development. Yeah. But then yeah. You, you pull the top off it and it's the X1. You it's know what X1, I mean? It's X1. Yeah. TC. Yeah. They've just repainted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, mate, thanks very much for coming out, man. I Thank think... you for downloading me with that info for tonight, man. That's, that was fucking excellent. Yeah. yeah I good, enjoyed it. It was a good one. I don't know how long we went for. We were in the rabbit hole for a while, but yeah. um, I think that's about it, mate. Uh, that is. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Cheers for having me over, brother. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Catch guys. You, man. Cheers.